Next we have Ms. Irina Dia, Associate Director of Early Childhood Development at UNICEF Headquarters. She will be virtually talking about uh, nurturing for transforming lives, the power of early childhood development. Honorable President of Pakistan, Dr. Arif Alvi, ministers, representatives of ministries, government dignitaries, honorable government participants, academia, civil society partners, UN sister organizations, and distinguished participants. Greetings from New York. I'm Irina Dia, Associate Director for Early Childhood Development in UNICEF, and congratulations to all of you on this important conference. Apologies really for not being able to be there in person, but I do appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. While explicitly embedded in SDG 4 to ensure lifelong learning, early childhood development underpins several sustainable goals. It contributes to poverty reduction, one, health and nutrition, three and two, women and girls equality, five, and violence prevention. Greater investment in quality, affordable childcare, for example, is linked with greater opportunities for women, economic advancement, and empowerment. Disadvantaged children who receive ECD services earn up to 25 more, up to 25% more as adults, compared to their peers who did not receive any. Early childhood development should therefore not be seen as only a target in the SDGs, but as a multiplier across all development goals. And why is that? In the first 1,000 lives of days of life, brain cells spark new connections. Connections that are formed at once in a lifetime speed of 1 million per second. They contribute to children's brain function and learning, and they lay the foundation for their future health and happiness. At birth, the baby's brain comes in ready to receive stimulation and enriching experiences. So in supportive and secure environments, synapse formations or neural, neural connections are strengthened. But these connections can also be interrupted if a child is poorly nourished, if she's not stimulated properly, and if she's not protected from violence and pollution, for example. And that is why the child's environment in the early years is so important. It enables the development of these critical connections. This wiring of the brain that underlies our ability to sense, learn, remember, and develop feelings and behavior is very much dependent on the supportive environment, not just the genetic capital the child is born with. So advances in neuroscience, what we know and keep learning about the impact of both positive and negative experiences on the brain have led to revolutionary shifts in the way we think about child development. It also has significant implications for our work with and for children. So there are five key things that we have been able to derive from science. The first that not only genes matter, rather development is an outcome resulting from interactions between the child's genes or its blueprint for brain development and the environment that shapes it. But this needs to start as early as possible, even during pregnancy for child development to be optimal. It does not mean, however, that any damage done at this stage is reversible. But the more we wait, the more difficult it will be to change later. There are also three types of stress, positive, terrible, and toxic stress. And while moderate and short-lived stress responses in the body can promote growth, toxic stress can have lasting negative impact. Without caring adults to buffer children, the unrelenting stress caused by extreme poverty, neglect, abuse, or severe maternal depression can weaken the architecture of the developing brain with long-term consequences for learning, behavior, and both physical and mental health. The fourth message reminds us that the brain, unlike many of us, does not work in silos. All of its areas are interconnected. They work at the same time and together. 
So when an area is stimulated, the others also get activated. For example, a child that is constantly beat, beaten up will have a very difficult time focusing on school homework. Now, nourishing the body, definitely, but the mind also needs its share of nourishment and stimulation. And evidence clearly indicates that maximum reduction of stunting occurs when nutrition and stimulation are delivered together. Even before the child learns to speak, stimulation can take place through engagement with parents and caregivers, express through cuddling, eye contact, smiles, vocalizations and gestures, mutually enjoyable interactions that will create an emotional bond and help young children understand the world around them, help them learn about people, relationships, language. But the importance of starting early is based on James Heckman's groundbreaking research, arguing that the best way to reduce deficits is to invest in quality early childhood development for disadvantaged children. Not only will it create better educational and health outcomes for the individual, but also greater social and economic outcomes in general to increase productivity and revenues and reduce social spending. So investment in birth to five early childhood programs for disadvantaged children have been seen to yield between 13 and as much as 16% return on investment per child per annum through better education, economic health and social outcomes. But for this to happen again, efforts should focus on the first years for greater efficiency and effectiveness because as the graph shows clearly, the highest rate of return in early childhood development comes from investing as early as possible from birth to age five. Now, everything I've been talking about, the neuroscience and the evidence that was shared in the 2016 Lancet series that the Foundation for Lifelong Health, Productivity and Wellbeing is built in the early years, starting from pregnancy if possible, has informed what is commonly referred to as the nurturing care framework. In other words, what young children need to develop physically, mentally and socially, what they need to survive, but also thrive. So what we say is that to reach the full potential, children need five interrelated and indivisible components. They need good health, they need adequate nutrition, they need safety and security, responsive caregiving, and opportunities for learning. And just like the various areas of the brain, all these components are interrelated and must be provided at once, at the same time, for the holistic development of the child to happen. But how do we promote nurturing care? For that, we need strong collaboration of sectors and actors to deliver ECD as an outcome for children, because as I already mentioned, everything must happen at once. All sectors must be together so that the child can have access to good health, adequate nutrition, responsive caregiving, opportunities for learning and safety evolve in the safe and secure environment. Now, for strong ECD systems will depend or be based on eight key ingredients, but let me emphasize three of them here. Um, first, the need to have a multi-sectoral endorsed ECD policy which can provide framing and clarity, and that will eventually lead to a strategy and an action plan for early childhood development. Public financing, supplemented by innovating financing as needed, working with the private sector, communities, so that they can also contribute, give their share for better children's development outcomes, but also a, co a coordinating body with clear roles and responsibilities so that everyone knows what they are responsible for. Let me conclude by saying that the science is clear. The tools are here and the time to act is now. Thank you for your attention.